Hello everybody. Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy Private Pilot Airplane Single Engine Ground School course. My name is Mike Thompson. I'll be your instructor as we go through the course. Now, remember to get the most out of this course. Don't just watch these videos. After you watch these videos, please study and review all of the material on Schoology. And thirdly, you must sit down and discuss and review with your flight instructor. All right, let's get started. Now, in this course, there's going to be a variety of books and manuals. The first one that you're going to use is called the Jeppesen Private Pilot Textbook. Now, let me give you a hint. In the use of any book or manual, start with the table of contents. The table of contents helps you get the big picture and stay organized. In addition to the Jepson book, you're going to use the Gleim Private Pilot Guide. In addition to the Gleim Guide, another text you're going to want to get to know very well throughout the course is going to introduce you to your aircraft, the 172 POH, Pilot Operating Handbook. As you'll discover before long, the actual POH stays with the aircraft. You're going to have a copy of the POH called the Pilot Information Manual. All right, in addition to that, uh, you're going to gradually get to know what we call the FAR AIM. FAR for Federal Aviation Regulations, AIM for Aeronautical Information Manual. As you study the FARs for your private pilot exam and check ride, you're going to see that the Code of Federal Regulations is made up of titles and the titles are made up of parts. Title 14 is Aeronautics and Space. That's where we're going to find the Federal Aviation Administration. Inside Title 14, under the FAA, we're going to find 199 different parts. Don't worry, you don't have to know all 199. Initially, for your private pilot, you're going to be most familiar with Part 61, Certification of Pilots. Part 91 are General Flight Rules. Part 43, Maintenance, and then uh, under the Department of Transportation, you're going to find Part 830, and that's all about notification of aircraft accidents. As you get to know the Aeronautical Information Manual, uh, again, table of contents is critical. You're going to see that there are 10 chapters in the AIM. Now, besides those textbooks and handbooks, the FAA publishes what they call advisory circulars. Pilots call these ACs for short. One of the things we say in aviation is, hey, there's an AC for just about anything. Here's an example of an advisory circular. Okay, these are extremely helpful and um, uh, uh, very helpful on a wide variety of topics. The FAA also publishes what we call NOTAMs. Now these used to be called Notices to Airmen. Recently the name has changed. The FAA now refers to these as Notice to Air Missions. NOTAMs are time critical aeronautical information that's not sufficiently known in advance to permit publication on a chart or in a handbook. We're going to deal primarily with two types, the NOTAM-D, which is distance NOTAMs, and the FDC NOTAMs. Those are flight data center NOTAMs for IFR procedures and technical flight, uh, I'm sorry, temporary flight restrictions. The best way to stay on top of TFRs, temporary flight restrictions, is at the FAA's NOTAM website. Now, when we talk about becoming a pilot, we also talk about category and class of aircraft to fly. What do we mean when we talk about this? Categories are broad classifications of aircraft. We're going to look at four. Airplanes, rotorcraft, gliders, and lighter than air. Now, a class of aircraft is a subset of a category. 
And class of aircraft are aircraft with similar operating characteristics. For example, if we're looking at airplanes, we may say that single engine airplanes are a class, or multi engine airplanes are a class, or water aircraft, otherwise known as seaplanes. So, in the category, these are all airplanes, but they are different classes. Next, let's talk about certifications. Pilots receive a pilot certificate, and there are several different pilot certificates. The first one that you are going to possess is called a student pilot certificate. In order to achieve this certificate, you must have a current medical, and you must be at least 16 years of age. Unless you're in flying a glider or a balloon, in which case you could be 14. But for airplanes, 16 years old. You also must be able to read, speak, and understand English. You're going to hold your student pilot certificate while you're working toward your first goal. Your first goal is your private pilot certificate. This certificate is used to fly VFR, that means under visual flight rules and visual meteorological conditions. People use the private pilot certificate to fly for pleasure or personal business. We cannot accept compensation or fly for hire with a private pilot certificate. Once you achieve that, you'll work on your commercial pilot certificate. The commercial pilot certificate is required if you want to be compensated to fly professionally. Eventually, you'll work on what we call the Airline Transport Pilot Certificate, or ATP for short. Other pilot certificates include Sport Pilot and Recreation Pilot. Now, pilot certificates can have ratings attached to them. Let me give an example. You ever heard the expression, you can put a boat on a ship, but you can't put a ship on a boat? Ratings and certificates work like that. You can put a rating on a pilot certificate. Let me give an example. You hold a private pilot certificate and you want to be able to fly in a wider range of weather conditions. You're going to attempt to get what we call an instrument rating. And with a little work with your instrument flight instructor, you take an instrument check ride and you have an instrument rating on your private pilot certificate or a multi-engine rating. Say you want to fly a multi-engine airplane, you get that multi-engine rating on your certificate. Other ratings include seaplane, rotorcraft, gyroplane, glider, gli uh, and lighter than air. Okay guys and gals, that's just about it for today. Now, at the end of every session like this, what we want to do is wrap up with a short Q&A. So here we go. I want you to answer this yourself. If you can't answer it right away, use Schoology and be sure to review it with your flight instructor. Question number one, FAR 91, is that regulatory or is it advisory? Question two, advisory circulars, are those regulatory or are they advisory? Okay, question three, Name a category of aircraft. Name a class of aircraft. All right, guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today. See you next time.